There's a lot of builders that build what I call Franken-woofers, where they're just miscellaneous parts from different subwoofers they've got laying around. They throw together a sub and they sell those. Uh, I, I want to talk about the issues of that. Also, some sometimes catalog subs can do this as well. Like I've mentioned before from China, sometimes they've just got um, you know a basket laying around and some cones laying around, and they just kind of throw stuff together that's not really optimized as well. Uh, or sometimes they're just they're just designed and they're not really designed um, to be very efficient. They're just once again they 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 just throw them together and they sell them. But uh, today I'd, I'd kind of like to talk really kind of specifically a lot about the uh, motor as well too. So here's the magnets, or here's the two magnets, and so sometimes you'll see magnet weight. Uh, more often than not, you see motor weight. Motor weight includes this top plate right here. The bottom plate, back or called back plate, uh, the pole piece, which comes up the center. You can't see because the voice coils in the way. I guess you can see this part of the pole piece coming up the center. And we talked a lot about um, the heat uh, being wicked away from the voice coil. Sorry, guys, I'm a, I'm a little bit sick. I'm getting over kind of being sick. Um, so my voice is a little raspy. Anyways, we did talk about how this, uh, the gap, which is this top plate and this pole piece, basically. So between these right here uh, is where the gap is. And so you've got the voice coil. It's not quite centered, as you can see. It's not supposed to be quite centered. Um, but the pole piece and the top place where they kind of cross this little, little air bridge right here, that is the gap. And so I've seen builders sometimes use a very thin top plate the thin top plates um a lot of times are just from like a lot of older subs kind of had thinner top plates and um back in the day they didn't have as you know always like really beefy magnets a lot of times they had kind of smaller more sensitive subs than what we have today and so these uh, top plates if they're too thin what happens is let me see if I can draw on this. I'm selecting a color. Let me see what we got. Perfect. Okay. So you've got these Gauss lines that um, the magnetic field or the flux. These are the individual or in, invisible lines from um, the, the field that the magnets are basically creating. And if this is too thin, so these magnets saturate this top plate. And if it's too thin, well, it's already it's already saturated. And you can imagine you might lose, let me erase, let's say it's, it's thinner, you might lose a lot of this magnetism. So if this magnet was like half as thick, you might only have half as many, or half as much uh, essentially BL or uh, magnetic flux right here in the gap. Not only that, I mean that's that's a big problem because you you can lose a lot of your magnetic field from that. But this also we talked about yesterday wicks away the heat. So if this is too small, then not a lot of heat is being absorbed from the voice coil. So I prefer I prefer a much bigger top plate than needed compared to a smaller top plate. Now, now, these do, they, they use a, a program they call FEA Optimize. If you ever hear that, what they're doing essentially is they're designing the magnets and the top plate and the bottom plate to be the right thickness and the right size to give enough um, pull to, for, their, for kind of a specific, um, their specific sub that they're building. And so they're able to design the right thickness of a top plate and bottom plate and magnets for what they need and it it uh, saves a lot of extra um, parts and pieces like they, they don't have to mill this tube thick and they may find that they don't quite need as much magnets uh, or... so what happens I, I've seen this a lot like I said they, they use a top plate that's too small and you end up affecting the power handling and it, it, it's not as sensitive. So top plate's really important. Same thing with the back plate. The gap, how thick is this gap? 
Sometimes they make a, a, a wide gap, which actually allows a little bit more cooling. You get a little bit more of this air on the gap heated up, and this top plate wicks away that heat. Uh, it's not as sensitive, though. The sub is not as sensitive when you do that. So you got narrow gap, which is a very tight space between the top plate and the pull piece, and that narrow gap allows more sensitive, more sensitivity for subs. A lot of times you'll see burp subs in SPL competitions that will actually have a thin gap, and that makes it more sensitive, but it doesn't quite handle the heat as well. It's also really a pain when you're Re, uh, reconing them. You know, want to make sure you get that just right with the, the voice coil in there. Otherwise, it's gonna it's gonna rub. And they can rub. It. I mean, as the voice coil heats up, if it's not centered just perfectly, it it could rub and cause problems. <laughs> Another thing I've seen is they'll use older frames. Like this is actually an older frame. You can see this is a, a Rockford. I actually pulled this one off of uh, this right this site right here, TalkBase.com. This gentleman had posted it. So yeah, shout out to Rockford for this. This is actually the perfect image for what I wanted to kind of talk about today. You see sometimes they use these older frames and you notice this frame cuts in pretty quick. Some of the sundown frames, or the new frames that have really a lot of excursion, the frame comes down kind of like this and then kind of cuts over and that's so that they can fit a much bigger spider in there. This spider might only give you maybe uh, two inches total X max at most. And so they'll, sometimes these builders will use a spider and it'll be small because the frame they're using is small. And then they'll, they'll stack these magnets that, like really deep to make it look like it's got tons of excursion. They'll use a mega roll on top to make it just look awesome. And then it actually sucks. <laughs> Uh, the the whole sub just sucks. The the mega roll eats up a lot of the cone, so it's not quite as loud. The spider uh, is too small, so you don't have a lot of movement. You have all these extra magnets, so that it ends up being super heavy. And then you end up with a small uh, top plate, thin top plate, and and you don't have a lot of sensitivity. And the whole sub is just completely terrible. So <laughs> so just. Just be aware, if, if you're getting someone building you a Franken woofer, hopefully they have the entire motor already put together, like, from another sub or another manufacturer, good quality manufacturer, so the whole motor is already ready. They're not swapping in different top plates and pole pieces and such. And then hopefully they use a kind of a, a newer suspension frame if you're looking for that that X-Max. Uh, also the voice coil. I mean, if this voice coil... They use a voice coil that's too long, it's smacking the pole piece in the bottom. If they use a voice coil that's too short, uh, it'll be a little bit more like an SPL sub. Not always bad, but you, you won't be able to play the lows as well. So lots of things to consider when they design a sub. Like everything, is, the surround is important. Um, the cone, dust cap, everything kind of comes together. Everything has a purpose. And it all needs to kind of work with itself. Otherwise, you just end up with just terrible subs. They're just they're either they're either designed with parts that are both for SPL and for ultra excursion subs, or who knows who knows what you get. Franken woofers. They're called Franken woofers. So I hope this kind of helped. Uh, I want to. I can't wait to get into box rise or impedance rise that's going to be a really fun topic because i want to show you how to do it properly how to measure your rise properly so many people online always talk about their their rise and they'll say it's uh i've you know a lot of people go four five six seven times rise i i just don't think these people are measuring it properly <laughs> um they're and it's 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 not that it's not that simple um you don't just sit down and measure your voltage and your amperage and then, you know, calculating, oh, this is my box rise. There's a lot of things you have to consider and a lot of testing you have to do. Although it, it, it only takes a few minutes. It takes five minutes to do it. Um, anyways, uh, I want to talk about that sometime in the future. And then I can't wait to talk about amp power. So how much... 
how much you know amp should you get for your subs that's gonna be kind of a fun topic too i can't tell you how many times someone will ask that and they'll be like i got the the you know sundown xv3 what amp should i put on that's a 2000 watt rms sub and i'll hear people say put an 8k on it and other people will be like put a 5k and and it, it gets it gets pretty stupid so a lot of people throw out their numbers Maybe they're just not worried about recoing their subs all the time. And so to them, it's like they just expect you to blow it. Other people are, you know, pretty conservative. And and so we'll talk a little bit about that coming up, too. Can't wait. Also, I know I got the um, part two on the X versus the U sub. Uh, I'm hoping to get that one done. I'm kind of building a spot so I can record. Right now, I'm kind of setting up and tearing down each time. And uh, you saw my lighting from yesterday. I could use work, so I got some lights ordered. And then uh, hopefully I can actually show you. I've got an X, uh, it's a V2 and a UV1. I'm going to show you those, compare them. And then I do want to talk about the X Max because they both have 30 millimeters of X Max, but that's kind of um, a deceiving number, right? We know the Xs do the ultra low stuff, and I'm going to talk about why that X Max is deceiving in uh, the next video and how the, uh, the the X actually does have a lot more excursion capability. Anyways, uh, love you guys. You guys are awesome. Keep it up. Post video ideas in the comments. Uh, I'm going to start showing more things with the live webcam coming up. But uh, if you have experiments or ideas or thoughts, post them. I'll probably just keep a log. And I'll, I'll try to do some, some of the stuff with some of the ideas you guys give me. Anyways, for now, appreciate the support. Thanks so much. Have an awesome week. And uh, cheers.